Ooky spooky time. Okay. <laughs> Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm gonna be giving some Summerween recommendations. Um, I don't know. <laughs> this, okay, listen, is this video organized? No, I had some issues Sunday night and Monday night when I was going to originally be filming and editing this to go up the day that it's going up. Now I'm editing it and, well, I'm filming it and editing it and posting it all on Thursday, so. Hey, um, yeah, I'll talk about that in the vlog. <laughs> I talk about that in the vlog. I don't need to talk about it here. But, um, basically this is not gonna be organized how I wanted it to be. I was gonna organize it by prompts, but really I have just organized it more by genre because all of these books have either a certain edition or the cover itself completely looks like Halloween in general. So it'll at least fit the Halloween prompts. There are some paranormal, there are some horror, and then the other ones that don't fall into either of those, you could just do during, you know, making the treat or whatever, or you could read them in the dark, and then that would solve the problem, right? Bing, boom, there, you know? You see? So, okay, so let's get on into this list. So first, I saw a couple of comments asking for witchy books. So I'll start with those. I don't have that many, but the ones that I have read, I really, really enjoyed. Okay, so the first one that I have is The Ravens. I know that I talk about this all the time. I know you've heard me talk about this book already, but let's talk about it again. How I pitch this book to anybody I want to read it, which is everybody, is that it is Scream Queens meets American Horror Story, specifically the Coven season. So we have two point of views that we're following. We have a point of view of someone who's been in this sorority for multiple years and she is well acquainted with everything that's going on there. And then we have the point of view of the brand new girl who is a freshman to this college and she is pledging to this sorority. And she does not realize, although her mom did try to warn her, that this sorority is really a cover for a coven. And once she figures that out, everything starts to kind of roll, but then also, um, ooh, bad pun, but heads start to roll because people are getting murdered on campus and they have to figure out who is committing like all of this dark magic, witchcraft, witchery business, and there's also just the regular drama of dating and being a college sorority sister, which I wouldn't know what that's like. I was not in a sorority. They quite frankly terrified me. However, this one makes it seem kind of fun. Wish I had been in one. If they were witches. If not, no thank you. <laughs> but yeah, so this is a really quick one. Definitely recommend. Uh, the next one that I really enjoyed was These Witches Don't Burn. This is another one where there is, a, it's got small town, which I love cozy small towns. And we are following a high school main character. She is having drama in her coven, I believe, because she had just broken up with her girlfriend. And so there's that drama. And then a new girl moves in. And that is what I can remember from just the basic, like, what's going on in her life plot. But then what's going on witchcraft-wise is there is a blood witch that is, like, out to get them and being really creepy and murdery. And she thinks it's from her past, but also it could be the new girl that moved in who she's starting to have a crush on. Like, we don't even know what's going on. But it was so good. I loved the friendships and relationships in this book. I do not recommend the audiobook, though because the narrator does a really obnoxious voice for one of the girls that you're supposed to actually like, and I ended up not liking her because she sounded so snooty and rude, even though like what she was saying was sweet and kind, but her voice was just like, and I just, oh, I could hardly stand it. So I would steer clear of the audiobook, but still a fun read. And then the last one is more of a, TV show recommendation, but I will also say that the book is really good too. So this is this is how I would decide if you want to read this one. So it's a discovery of witches. How I would decide if you want to read this one is I would watch the first episode of the TV show. I think it's available in America now. Um, if not, don't you wish a VPN company was sponsoring this video? They're not though. So you can find it though, you know, little ways to 
find it. I would watch that first episode, see if you like it. If you do, I would go read the book first because the book is so good, so, so freaking good. But it is very, it's, it's so similar to the TV show that if you've read the book and then you watch the TV show, you're gonna really appreciate it. But if you've watched the TV show and then you try to go read the book, it's redundant and you're probably not gonna get through the book because it is very very similar at least that was my experience with it thankfully i read like majority of it before i started the tv show so i was fine but this one we have our main character who's a witch and she is studying at a very prestigious school in england that i can't think of off the top of my head but she's a professor she's super smart the author is actually a historian so there's so much history dumped into this book that it really does feel like you're in a history class as well but there's vampires werewolves and witches involved instead which is like way cooler obviously but she's there she's she knows she's a witch, but she's like, no thanks. Then one day she is able to call down a book that no one has been able to find for, I mean, since it was made and the legend was born from it basically, because it details the creation of vampires and people want it for good reasons. People want it for bad reasons. We don't really know all the reasons, but she then meets Mathieu, who is a vampire and he is just lovely. It's just lovely. So yeah, from there, they have their moment multiple times, multiple moments. And you know, people are after her, trying to murder her. There's some mystery, there's some thriller. It's great. 10 out of 10, I recommend, but this is definitely a heavier book. So unless you're only re trying to read like, I don't know, two books this week, or you do the um, audiobook of this, the audiobook is actually really enjoyable. You may be able to finish it then, but it took me two weeks to finish it just because there's so much history. And honestly, I kept getting distracted because I was like, is this real? So I kept Googling like all the, and it lines up, which I think is so fun that she finds actual historical events or people that line up and kind of, it's like, oh yeah, I mean, he could have been a vampire. That, that checks. So I don't know. I like. Next up, I have some mysteries and thrillers. So the first one I have is Ace of Spades. This just recently got released. I read it a couple months ago. I was obsessed when I finished it. It is so good. It is is pitched i believe as gossip girl means get out which i definitely agree that is absolutely spot on to what it is it is the dark academia book that the book community was claiming they wanted but then also the one that they're not talking about which is upsetting to me but that's fine i'll just keep talking about it like no problem that's fine we'll keep going so with this one we have two main characters one is a super popular girl at the school. Everyone loves her. She, well, well. And then we have a boy who is kind of, he just keeps to himself. He has a, he has a couple of friends or whatever, but he's really into his studies and music and he wants to kind of hone in on that and focus more on that. So we have one who's really social, one who's more studies focused, but they are both seemingly the only people being targeted by this gossip girl-esque text message that keeps going out. So it is already off to a sinister like kind of start because it's the two, only two black kids that go to the school that are being targeted by this text message thing and they don't know why. So eventually they do end up teaming up and they find out more about it and the more that it unfolds the more sinister it is and the darker it is and just the more like messed up all of it is and it was just a really good book it was it was very well done the pacing was completely on point perfect the entire time there was not a lull in this book like it was it was perfect the only way i can really describe it is like when you were reading it and things were getting too heavy and intense and you needed a break to breathe the author like wove it in there for you no problem but then you didn't get comfortable because something happened right then or there was something out of the corner of their eye or they saw someone pass by the window like it was just done to perfection next up is a another thriller but this one is more like my lifetime movie thriller that's how I pitch it and that's how I think it's best pitched because this is a really fast read but it's it's fairly it's it's a really fun fast read for the moment but honestly it's a little forgettable uh, it is the wife upstairs this is a Jane Eyre retelling if you don't know anything about Jane Eyre do not go look it up don't do it because then you're gonna spoil the ending for you because it is very very similar 
to that. I mean, it, it takes retelling very seriously. Um, however, there is a little twist to Rue at the end that was really enjoyable that I liked, so that was fun. But this is a girl who is a dog walker in a very affluent, rich neighborhood. She quite literally gets run over by this dude who is a, what is it, a widower? And I don't know if he's technically a widower though, because his wife is just missing, as is another one in the neighborhood, which is his wife's friend, and it's just like very suspicious activity is going on in this area. The radar is going off, you know? And he starts to take a lot of interest in her. Uh, one example is he does not have a dog, asks her to dog walk, and she's like, well, you don't have a dog? And he's like, I'll get a dog. And then he does get a dog. And she's like, oh my God, <laughs> it's so cute. And he's like, eh, 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 you know? So priorities, not completely set for this lady, but whatever, do what you gotta do. I respect, I respect anyone's hustle. And the thriller does take off. I think the thrilling aspect is when the thriller moments are there, they're very good. But unlike Ace of Spades, there's a lot of lulls and it's very strange that there are so many lulls considering how short this book is and relatively fast paced. Like it's fast paced. When you finish reading, it's fast paced, but in the middle of it, it feels slow. I don't know if that makes sense, but it's still fun. I still recommend. It was a great, it was a grand, great time for sure. And then finally in this category, I have a very lighthearted mystery, which is Finlay Donovan is killing it. <sighs> Y'all know, I read this one a while back. I can't shut up about it. It was so freaking good. So we're basically following a woman who is mid-divorce. She's got two kids, so living that single mom life. I classify her as a single mom because the dad is basically like, and she's an author. She's a struggling author. So she goes to the good old Panera Bread one day, right? As you do as a struggling author, I assume. And why do I go to Panera then? Because I'm just struggling. I'm not an author. But she's there. She's talking with her agent over some mac and cheese, which honestly sounds really good right now. And they decide that, you know, she's basically her agent's like telling her, you got to get this book done now. But they never really specify that it's the book. It's, it's the job. They gotta get the job done. Well, they're overheard in this conversation and she is mistaken to be a hit woman. And someone approaches her and is like, hey, I got a job for you. And she's like, uh, I just write books. <laughs> I don't murder people. And the lady's like, mm, no, I think you do. And basically, Finlay turns into an accidental hit woman. Like, this would be if Liam Neeson, the family man, was a comedy and he accidentally turned into a vengeful hitman. And it was fabulous. It was so good. And I didn't realize this is going to be a series. There's another book that's already planned. Y'all, we're really living the best lives that we possibly could right now. So that's, that's very exciting. I recommend this one highly. I do think there's red on the cover, which if you squint, technically red looks a little orangey. So uh, I'm just saying could fit the prop. Okay. Now we have for the horror and paranormal prompts, I have specific books set out, so we'll do paranormal first. So we have my favorite paranormal book that I've read in quite some time, which is Home Before Dark by Riley Sager. This book just gets me so excited because I think if you really enjoyed, what is it? Not Haunting of Bly Manor, but the other one. I, well, I don't know why I can't remember it, but if you liked that TV show, this book reads a lot like that in the way that in that show, a lot of the scenes fade from like present day to past. This book does that so well. And I, I honestly don't know, like it, this is when I get just so in awe of authors like who are able to write so well that I, cause I sometimes struggle to picture things in my head, but there's a scene where she's at a record player, okay? And it starts playing by itself, which I think is one of the creepiest things ever. Also, I kind of get, I, I got a record player because I was like, wow, wouldn't it be so scary if it like started to play by itself? So like, I'm kind of waiting for that to happen. It hasn't happened yet, which is disappointing to say the least because it's a very expensive record player, but maybe that's why it's not happening because I didn't get a cheapo one that's just gonna like, you know, have bad wiring. But anyways, so she is standing at the record player. It starts playing by itself and then it like fades to when the dad is standing at the record player years and years ago and it plays by itself. Oh, uh, I didn't even told you the plot of this one. I just, but that scene gives me chills and like my soul and my heart and my brain, like good chills, bad chills, all the chills, intellectual chills. I'm just like, oh, the craft, but the scary at the same time. Oh, fabulous. So plot, let's talk about the plot. This girl had a very Amityville horror moment for her childhood. 
I think she was in the house for five days when she was like five years old and her dad like scooped her, got her out of there with her mom because they were like, this place is super haunted and they ran away. And then he wrote a book about it, which she thinks, basically why I say it's Amityville Horror is because you know, there's that whole drama on like if Amityville Horror even happened, it didn't. And I think that it mirrors that a lot, which is awesome because I love that um, story. I like the story. I like the idea of Amityville Horror, but y'all come on. The Warrens, please. All I will say is Patrick Wilson. All right, you've convinced me. But I do think that this one will be really good if you like dual timelines, if you like The Conjuring even. I do think this kind of has a similar feeling to it. Um, but it's, it's the dual timelines is really good because it's so fast paced and every time there's like a slow chapter, which there's really no slow chapters, but when there is, let me order my Chipotle really quick. But even when there is a slow chapter, it's not. And then the next chapter picks right up where, okay, so how do I explain this? My brain is going a thousand miles a minute. Chapter one ends in a cliffhanger, right? And then chapter two is like, let's say the dad's chapter that ends in a cliffhanger, but then chapter three picks up where chapter one's cliffhanger left off, but then chapter three ends in a cliffhanger. And then chapter four picks up where the dad's past chapter left off in the cliffhanger. And the dad's cliffhangers are always paranormal, but then the daughter's cliffhangers are always that, is it paranormal or is it not paranormal kind of thing where you don't know. And when I tell you a year later, I'm still questioning if it was paranormal or not, you don't know. There's no confirmation. It's amazing. This, stop, stop, read it. Okay, also green is a Halloween color in this heart and this book glows in the dark. So I don't know what else you want from me except the fact that I'm gonna freaking order this case today really quick. Okay, next up, I have The Broken Girls. This is another paranormal thriller that has dual timelines. One is in the past, one is in the present. The present, we are following a main character whose sister got killed on a school grounds that's been abandoned for quite some time. Please don't start up right now with me. I'm talking about spooky books. Uh, her sister was killed on the school grounds, like I said, and she is, someone was convicted of it, but she doesn't think it happened how it did happen. So she's essentially on a mission to prove that it did, it didn't go down how the person who's convicted claims it went down and she wants to solve that crime Well, then we go into the past and we see that a lot of sketchy things went on in this area uh, Of the abandoned school in the 50s when it was still open and operating and so what I really enjoyed about this is, first of all, again, with the fast-paced reads, each timeline is not necessarily fast-paced, but the way that they are written makes the other fast-paced because I am someone who tends to heavily enjoy one timeline versus the other in books. However, this one had me going back and forth between which one I enjoyed more because they were both following, I think, a pretty steady pace for each timeline, but every time that one would get boring, the other one got super interesting, and then when I would lose interest, interest in one, it would kick back up again, but then I was tossed back into the other timeline and I'm like, well, what the heck? Things just got good. So I really liked that. This one, I will say some people don't like to go into paranormal thrillers without knowing for sure. Um, I think this is Simone St. James, if I'm not wrong, the author. Her thrillers are classified as paranormal thrillers. It, it's not a guessing game of if they're paranormal or not. Um, you know, there's some like Ruth Ware that have the ones where you don't really know Riley Sager now. Uh, with Simone St. James, it's like they are marketed as such and they follow through. So if you specifically want a paranormal thriller, uh, I recommend this. It's not cheesy, which I think is a really important thing. And that's why it's not a spoiler. Like, I, I don't want you to think that this is one of those ones that are like, is it paranormal or not? Like, because it, it is, and it's not a spoiler that it is, but I, I wanted to clarify that it is not a cheesy paranormal one because so many paranormal thrillers, they're fun at the beginning, but then they just, they don't, they don't write it out right right? Like it just, it doesn't go to the end very well, but this one does. And it was really fun and entertaining and scary and creepy at all at the same time. So recommend for sure. Then the last one I have is The Shadows by Alex North. I also recommend The Whisper Man. They're both fairly similar in their plot lines, but I'm gonna talk about The Shadows because it's the one I read most recently. This one, we are following a kid or he's a man now who grew up in this hometown of his where he, I don't think it was his friends, but there was, there are these kids that 
murdered someone and it's very infamous and they it was it's kind of like the slender man case where those two girls lured someone into the forest to kill them it's very similar to that and it's this like figure that you know this paranormal creepy figure that they they don't really know and they think well they're kids so it's not real or whatever but it's like but is it and he comes back because he needs to help his ill mother who has just like fallen and so she's getting into a nursing home and it's it that part's really sad but then a copycat murderer happens of the same thing and he gets kind of sucked back into it because of his ties to it. I can't remember explicitly what his ties to the previous case were. It may have been his friend that was killed. I'm, I'm not sure. I think that might have actually been. I just remember that the past one was not as creepy as the one in the present just because like it was so weird. It was so in weird in like a freaky creepy good way not in weird in like a I'm like not having a good time. Not that kind of way. The next two are middle grades. The first one is City of Ghosts by V.E. Schwab. This one, we have our main character who almost died and drowned, but she was saved by a ghost and now she's able to see ghosts and he is her best friend. She has parents. One is a paranormal scholar researcher person and the other one is a historian and they do a show together basically going through these old places in the world talking about the historical facts but then also some of the legends and lore that surround them and it's just about her journey in these places there's three books now one's in scotland one is in the catacombs and then the other one is in new orleans and then the other one i have is ghost squad which was one of the cutest most wholesome books i've ever read read. Uh, in this one, we have our main character and then their best friend, and they have to figure out why all of the like magic her family is like saved in this tree and they can still see them i think and they have to figure out why their lights are going out and why their ghosts aren't appearing as much anymore and it is just such a cute wholesome story there are sad parts but in like most middle grades it ends up okay it was just it's just a really light-hearted fun read and so i wanted to throw that in here with you know like all my serial killer recommendations and then last up i have horror recommendations and in this one of course we're going to talk about the southern book club's guide to slaying vampires you already knew we would this one is set in the 90s in the south. We are following a group of housewives who live in an affluent part of there's peaches on the cover so I always want to say Georgia but I think it's I, I think it's more on the east and across the street from them a vampire moves in and basically this vampire threatens their entire lives, their families, all of this eventually and this book club of housewives has to come together to slay this vampire and basically take care of ish because the husbands are useless and infuriating and also the housewives are infuriating too let me tell you there is no one in this book that is not awful like they of the main characters they all they all just suck equally but you know I really liked the depiction of vampires in this. I thought that it made them really creepy and it didn't even really attempt to romanticize because even when it was like he was turning on the charm and stuff, he was still really creepy and weird. Like it never really quite landed how I think Mr. Vampire wanted it to land. But yeah, this is one of those horror books that I've been raving about for forever. It's just so good of horror because it talks about actual issues, how horror like can know is meant to and it's just oh it talks about classism racism it talks about the fact that when a bunch of the black kids were going missing from this mysterious vampire the cops and no one really cared but then the white woman's families are being affected and all of a sudden it's like we got to get out these manhunts and we have to do all of these things but yeah this is just a really good one of course i had to recommend it then another one Jacob. Another one that I'm going to recommend because of course I am is When No One Is Watching by Alyssa Cole. This one I definitely claim it needs to be, I know it says thriller on the cover. Scratch it out or something. It's not a thriller. <laughs> it's way more of a horror. And basically what's happening is we have our main character who we're following who is going on this tour of her Brooklyn neighborhood and realizes that it's totally, like even just the history of it's being gentrified as in modern time, it is 
is quite literally being gentrified because all of her neighbors she grew up with are being forced out because rent is rising or just the ability to live there it's becoming harder and harder to do and then a bunch of white people are buying up all of the property and they're building this hospital that I think is specifically um, catering towards drug research like um, as in like the addiction to drugs and she decides that once one of her neighbors goes missing and didn't like speak to her and she knew it wouldn't happen like he wouldn't just leave like that she decides teaming up with one of the new residents in the neighborhood that she's going to solve this mystery and figure out what the heck's going on just like writing style wise they have a very next door-esque app on this book and some of the chapters you get to see a private group chat of the very sinister Nefar like just bad group of people that have moved in and see what they're talking about and then in other chapters you see them interacting with the longtime residents of this neighborhood and you're like this is just not adding up so yeah I mean, I won't I won't talk your ear off about this one. I know I've mentioned it so many times on this channel, but still I had I had to throw it out there. Then, if you want a Bigfoot found footage <laughs> horror book, Devolution, it's great. I'm not going to there's no more plot to discuss other than what I it's literally found footage of Bigfoot attacking this town. It's fantastic. The audiobook is 100% the way to go. 10 out of 10 recommend that one. So yeah, those are all my recommendations for this spooky summerween week coming up. If you have any recommendations that I didn't mention, leave them down below so everyone can grab some from there. Let me know what you guys are planning on reading. I'm very excited to film my TBR and get it up and talk to you guys about all that. And yeah, the emoji of the day I think is going to be either a bat emoji or a vampire emoji because fitting. And thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having a wonderful morning, afternoon, or night wherever you are. I will catch you in the comments down below and in my next video. Bye! Talking to the night until the morning, building chemistry.